Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Sunday. Where is it? Early evening breakdown, Dave. This is a bit early it's, for us, isn't it? It's not really. There's one of the numerous right things that have that, that that have um, impacted on my slightly better mood. <laughs> the six o'clock game is dead. The six o'clock game is dead, and the, the I mean, I'm not sure if I'm a Sheffield fan. I'd be that keen on going at one o'clock, but from my perspective, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. indeed, knows. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's been an eventful summer, Dave, as uh, as we somewhat predicted uh, the last time. Did you, is there anything you wanted to pick up on, or should we just move on to the Super League? I think moving on, just moving on to the Super League, as if it was just kind of a a single step in time would be a little bit disingenuous given the amount of hours that we've previously attributed to all the stuff that may or may not happen. Mm. Um, I'm sure we need to agree with that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, I did think a couple of times during the summer I was sending you a message saying, should we talk about this? And I thought, no, let's just see what happens. You know, we don't need, you know, you don't need, there doesn't need to be voices commentating on every single step as to what's going on. And and certainly there's nothing more tedious in the world than somebody who's constantly telling you how right they are. <laughs> so, so we're not going to do that. We've already done that. <laughs> um, I, I look back and I, I think it was um, somewhat predictable. I think if we go back about nine months, you and I were talking about how if something went wrong, it, would, it wouldn't finish basketball in this country. And I think we would be demonstrated to thanks to a lot of hard work, but thanks to also to a lot of invested people who basically need it to happen, mm. which I think was part of our calculation then. Um, it has continued. Um, there is absolutely no schadenfreude from my perspective. You know, it is what it is. It's been tried before and failed. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of people have basically had a lot of money from 777 and, and done quite well out of it. But the backside to that is that um, a lot of people have lost money. Yeah. As a result, you know, a lot of suppliers have lost money. I'm grateful to Rob for sending me the details of the um the the the, the administrator's report, you know, and how they owe the tax man 2.7 million. That's you, you and my money. That's probably our VAT, which hasn't been paid. Then there are you know lots of small creditors who are gonna get nothing. Yeah. And that's a sadly a, a kind of a repetitive story of British basketball over the ages. Mm. And on a grander scale. On a grander scale than ever, you know, basically we just dip our you know, the, the foot's all the way down the bottom of the bucket, isn't it? As opposed to just being the toe in the water. Um, and it it doesn't give us any pleasure to say, well, we kind of thought that might happen yeah. whilst trying to remain positive just in case, you know, something was different. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the the, the, the the things that I think we need to take out of the summer, and it was kind of, again, what we said last year, I thought, is that, you know, it it doesn't necessarily get worse if things go go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily get better, but it doesn't necessarily get worse. And um, the things we take out of the summer are one, there's more connection between the British Basketball Federation and the professional clubs, which, is a um, thing. which has to be a good thing. I've been yeah. calling it for donkey's years. You've now got a professional club owner um, as basically our um, most storied international player yeah. in Dan Clark. Um, you've got our head coach. National head coach also being a national coach in the Premier in, in the in the British Basketball League, most tool. And Super League basketball. Super League. Oh, I'm not gonna don't start me off with it. I mean, I did think about, you know, the reason it took so long for them to announce, obviously, was because I was considering legal action in relation to SFB <laughs> and SLB, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, one letter away. One letter away, you know, there's a bit of intellectual property hanging around there. <laughs> um but um, so we've got that. And um, you know, everybody's been uh, for somebody who's you know, had his concerns about the the national federation and, and raised them on here, and you know, and not not entering competitions and not seeing any direction. Um, you know, everybody has given Chris Grant at BBF a massive amount of plaudits for yeah, yeah. stepping in and doing what he probably had to do, but he didn't have to he do it. He didn't there. have to do it then. He could have waited, and if you waited, then you know we probably wouldn't be here right now. Would we? Well, that's right, and you know, and, and we've all well, I've certainly sat on here and bemoaned lack of proactivity for years. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so sort of making a proactive move, which basically it basically cuts seven 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 off at the hill. It it, it cuts you know the, by cutting the license away, it cuts the raison d'être. Mm. By cutting that away, you know it cuts the reality of any litigation mm. away because the, what you're litigating over, you know, you're not going to win in litigation with the national body when you've not fulfilled what you you say you're going to fulfill, and it just basically accelerated the, the whole demise. But the acceleration of the demise gave everybody else more time to try and create 
revise. Yeah. A, re a revised situation. So that that's a massive thing. And as I say, it would be wrong not to, to kind of raise that and say, you know, this is the way it has to be. Now, of course, the power, that is the power of the Federation. It's effectively the only power the Federation has yeah, yeah. Over, over the clubs, over the professional league, is to say, <laughs> you lot can't run it. You can't run a, you know, something in a brewery. And um, they've exercised that power. It works for everybody, which I think is good. Um, that said, you know, there's some things happened over the summer, which, you know, which didn't leave us in, in as great a state. That, that, you know, the youth national, national teams, apart from I think one of the girls' teams, was really disappointed in relation to where they finished in the tournament. You know, they were kind of middle of Division B, that type of thing, which is a good 12, 15 places lower than we should be. You know, we shouldn't be um where where they're at and so there's still a lot of stuff to be done um you know with the national federations particularly basketball england which obviously is separate from the bbf and then you look back on last year and what you look back on is in what you have now and, and you think we spent three three four million pounds of money that we didn't have mm. for a lot of content which is now all forgotten mm. i'm sorry that's a reality of it you know you know your analogy of um the, the sugar hit yeah you know yeah. you know what i mean yeah what well, greatest night in british british night in british british basketball history london lions women winning the euro cup mm. just lost to ipswich yeah yeah i'm not knocking ipswich ipswich no, great program no, no. okay sorry anybody did ipswich please don't get me down it's the first but, time a d1 team has been they don't play each other very often but it's the first no time a d1 team has been the w, w, but the, the point being is that dopamine hit is gone yeah and there's nothing there and we said it at the time and we got told, oh, no, you just, you know, spoil sports and, you know, you weren't there and all this stuff. The reality is that if you want that, if you want to live on the basis of sugar rushes, that's fine, but it's not sustainable. As you'll know, if anybody who watched Super Size Me will have an idea of, um, <laughs> which actually I watched and worried that it was a bit of a documentary about my life. Um, and I think he's dead now, so I really shouldn't yeah, have said that yeah, either. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, Morgan Spurlock. Um, so... You know, we think, and then I look at what, what's the difference is, well, what we've got now, we've got shorter games. We've got um, you guys back in the arenas and with very little noticeable difference on the coverage, I'm afraid. I know there's been some, there's been some. Um, One or two technical but, challenges in the opening. Well, of week, course I have, but you know I mean? If four million pounds, if one or two technical challenges, I think we'll all live. Yeah. Um, And the, the kind of the biggest thing is, you know, the biggest feeling is a feeling of regret. You know, I mean, I listened to to um, Vaughan Millet's interview with Sam Nita, um, which I thought was pleasing in its brevity. Mm. You know, and then it was a long way away from the fact the interview about four years ago with Jamie Edwards, put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and just apart from a couple of things, you know, it, it seemed to me that that's where Aaron Raiden and, and, and everybody should have been the last two years. You know, talk, we're talking about young players, we're talking about developing through the system, we're talking about gradual and consistent growth, you know, all of that stuff. And um, I'm not sure everybody's paying twice as much money as they were last year, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm slightly dubious. I've seen the recruitment. I'm sorry, maybe Sheffield are, but um, I don't think anybody else is. Um, I mean, Manchester probably didn't pay much last year. But um, overall, it, you know, with all the people that you've now got invested um, and who aren't to quote a kind of a, a, a rel relatively recent media playing personality dinosaurs, yeah. Um, you know they're actually the people that we've, the reason that we've got a league. Yeah. Now, yeah. How, you know, and and, they, and and ultimately without them, with running their businesses in Leicester, in Sheffield, in Newcastle, in Caledonia, in Cheshire, and we've got some new investors in, in Cheshire and in, in in Sheffield. That's great, no problem with that at all. Manchester. Um, in Manchester as well, albeit, yeah, Manchester being Sheffield guy's friend, but that's fine, you know, ultimately, can they make it work? Yeah. Um, and we got a team in London, and then London have had a bit of stick, you know, well, they've kept on the guy from 7-7, seven, 7-lens, seven, seven but at the end of the day, British basketball, Premier League franchises of whatever ilk, BBL, SBL, Carlsberg League, whatever, yeah, yeah. have always been dependent on people. Yeah, it is. Not people, people dependent. It's entirely people dependent, and you if you've got somebody who thinks I can make a go of this, and I want to make a go of this, and, and I'm going to resign from seven seven seven, and I'm going to give it a go, then I and, and then make something happen, maybe have some then 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 it's better than not having a team, yeah, because who, who else are you going to find to run it? Yeah, you know what I mean. So I think all of that kind of 
that kind of criticism is, is, is a little bit unfair. I think you have to get, we've got nine teams, we haven't got a team in Plymouth because as Vaughan Millett said, it costs eight grand to, to, to play a game. Yeah. Well, you can't put a business on that. No. And one thing that Plymouth has to do, and this is probably a bit harsh, me lecturing Plymouth as a city, mm. is that you know their council or their local authority or the people down there need to get together, yeah. need to get rid of all the divisions they've had in the past, and they need to find a way of getting a venue which is, goes beyond beyond less, maybe less than the cost, less than the pavilions, which is more basketball friendly, but obviously more um, appropriate for Super League basketball in the life centre, which isn't, oh, I've seen the pictures, it looks, looks pleasant enough, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not what the league is going to be looking for moving forward. So they've got to get their heads together to do that, you know, and if the, and if, and if the, um, the, the council don't see the value in it, and they're not going to assist, and if the people can't, if there isn't anybody there who's a lead, who can lead it, then it's not going to happen because you can't just keep spending money hand over foot simply to play a game. If your home games are losing money, mm. everything's losing money. Yeah. You know? So I regret that and I'm not being unsympathetic towards Plymouth. Um, but, you know, it's a fact of life over the years. They've been subsidised by by Bob Whittacombe for years and years and years, mm. um, who I think also passed away, we should say, say probably a couple of years ago now. Um, and... Um, and that subsidy, you know, if they haven't got anyone to subsidise it, then, then it fails. And yeah. and that is that is the world of sport. So overall, um, not the 777-esque rant, because ultimately though they are charlatans. I mean, they've been found out. Fat, you know, like it or not, I think the business the company's been wound up yeah. in the last couple of days. Um the no doubt they would have continued on bumbling along with other people's money with the with the BBL for another year if they could have. Um, but the Everton thing brought that all to the head, and you know, once they weren't getting Everton, the whole thing, the whole card, the whole pack of cards, house of cards fell. Um, I regret all the stuff that I think. I think the league took a wrong turn last year. I think the whole content stuff. You know, I was willing to, to not not say that at the time because I didn't know the truth. I didn't know. I'm not. It's not my marketplace. I don't know anything about content. Somebody who's more important than or more more well informed than me says that this is going to work because this is what young people take, etc. And this is how we're going to get more investment and all of that stuff. Um, then I'm going to accept that, but I don't think it did. Against that, you know, maybe we don't get those new owners in Sheffield and Manchester mm. if we haven't got the TV stuff going on in America. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you can. It's like everything. It's never entirely black and white. But I am happy that um, that the games are back to a reasonable length. I'm happy that um, commentators are back in the arena. Um, I'm happy that. We've got a coterie of people there in charge with with a kind of a little kind of turbo boost from the from the fellow at Sheffield mm. who appears to have his own money and to and to be a concert prevent promoter, which is probably one of the only equivalent businesses in the world mm. to running a professional basketball um, league or, or franchise in the UK because it's all about venues, events, yeah, all yeah. that type of stuff, you know, so it's not something new. And um, and and if the people of Sheffield have decided that he's an appropriate person to sell to or to sell part of, to sell majority share to, um, then you have to trust them because they've been doing it for thirty years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, against that, obviously, everybody sold the seven 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 three years ago. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sorry, so I'm I'm contradicting myself. What do you think? Well, it, I mean, it's it's good that we're going to be talking about some basketball in a in a yeah. short period of time. First of all, because that wasn't necessarily guaranteed at various points in the in the in the summer, I should imagine. And the fact and the fact it almost it seems to have given it a sort of new lease of life. Obviously, um, those of us who keep spreadsheets and history and all of that will deal with the bumps in the road that is this line in the way we had a 1987 line uh, and it probably isn't quite as positive as the 1987 uh, uh, movement no. has been but oh. as you say we got nine teams make it make it through and that wasn't a guarantee at the start of the no the and i think summer. if we didn't have and then four of those teams have their own venue yeah, yeah um yeah. you know which is um we never had 1987 no, we didn't. No. And we may have five now. No, no, the Bristol Shakedown's finished, and they're they're in the process of hopefully getting their their arena built as well. At least the starting process of it. That's five out of nine. That just leaves London, um, Surrey, um, Cheshire, and, and um, how can it not be Manchester? Manchester, but Manchester are playing the National Basketball Centre. Yeah, yeah. 
but basically if that's, that doesn't count as their own who does so and Cheshire are playing a relatively new facility and they've got good relations with and they've clearly got a business model that works so it's just London and, and Surrey and Surrey have got as I say they've got Dan and Jody who are you know proper basketball people London they've got Lens and um, the 143k that the copper box is currently owed mm. um, see what they get so let's go for it the one thing that's been positive is the talk of the what appeared to me to be realistic talk of potential future franchises. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I know Millet was very keen on, you know, a couple of the times, the only point he really got out of the interview with with, with Sam was the need for a, a license to, to kind of underpin that ownership. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a real motivation there for the clubs to get it done properly, yeah. do this yeah. whole thing properly, and to demonstrate that work. So Chris Grant can say, yeah, absolutely. Maybe next year, maybe the year after next, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, That... um. Yeah, you 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 you're good for us, mm. and it might be they've got to present the business plan. They've got to present the other owners who are going to get involved in the cities as well. But we want a league with you know sixteen teams in bottom line, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we'll have a proper league because then we'll have proper opportunities um, for British players at the moment it's, it, uh, and and young British players. Um, at the moment there are very few spots, and it's going to be very competitive. Yeah, yeah, and, and I suppose that's the other sort of reflection on it is. Uh we'll pick it up in the games it's quite hard when you look when, when we're looking at i don't know how row and tuck and laska picked uh, pick one to nine in the uh in the oh well i mean yeah pick i mean that was a bit i mean here i know the content business is still alive but yeah. you know you're picking the you're picking the um the league positions a month and a half before the league game starts i mean how are yeah. you guys but, uh, just put that to one side tucks tucks Tuck's pick of London first and sorry uh last looks slightly uh yeah well, yeah but you see i think but, but, but it's that thing of it, it's actually unbelievably difficult. Whereas this time last year, we all picked London at one because we knew they were going to... Yeah, I think you're picking the... um, You're picking for the long term, mm. aren't you? And in the long term, suggestion is that London may well end up with some slightly better players than they have now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give, they've, they've managed to keep Bozic on, which yeah. I thought he was going to Paris, to be honest. I thought I read that somewhere. And, and he's ended up back in London and, you know, and he's not in London for peanuts for the Super League basketball. So one would suggest, even though, there, and there's, that said, there is a salary cap. And, um, but, but I think what your, your good father said was that um, that was more of a kind of a luxury tax situation. Yeah. Um, whereby if you go over that salary cap, you're paying in the other teams, which is what I would be a proponent for for the last two years. It's what we had previously, I believe. What we had previously, yeah. You know, so... Um, so good. Yeah, I don't know how you'd pick all the teams together. Yeah. Lots of new players. But, uh, but overall, the point, the point I was making is they look pretty balanced, don't they? There doesn't yeah. look like a super good and a super bad. There looks a well. Lot of... the, no, I mean all 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 London's Euro Cup players have got to play in the Euro Cup, yeah. apart from you know Jordan Taylor, who's probably 34, 35, mm -hmm. and um, and, and we're not sure what's happening with Sam Decker. I know that they're they're honouring his contract, but he ain't going to be playing in London. He's going to be playing in London. Um, one assumed he's going to be getting loaned out somewhere, um, and so all and so Conor Morgan's away. All the you know they're all away. They're all playing at the level that they're meant to be playing at, um, which means that it opens things up. And obviously you're in a six American league, and a six American league is one whereby it is hard not to be competitive. You know, with, with thousands of players that come out of. Um, and what it does mean is it does make it interesting in relation to the kind of the jeopardy on each game. Maybe not so much in the trophy games, but certainly when the league games start, if the league, if winning the league is actually going to be actually something which is interesting people again, mm. what you're going to do with your stats? I mean, your stats carrying over. So I think I think basically for ten years you're going to have to do that. You're going to it's what we did in in 1987 to about the late 90s sort of thing. All the stats were back to back to 72, and then they... yeah, I think it'd be very oh, difficult for Defoe to start with zero yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At this point. Zero, zero career game played, zero. you know, same as a lot, I think you'll see a lot of usage of in top flight history. In top flight history, yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's entirely adequate. It's a serious point because you know, we just had this BBL Hall of Fame last year and all the bells and whistles yeah, yeah, for that, yeah. you know. And, and so, you know, it, it it does show that ultimately that the, 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 the answer in British basketball is never to get into millions and millions of pounds worth of debt. And whatever you're doing, whether you're running a club, a federation, a league, whatever, if you're in a lot of debt, there ain't a way out of it. Mm -hmm. No, because we we don't have a, we can't move things into ten thousand seat a stadium mm -hmm. and fill it up, and we can't um, 
expect you know Sky TV to pay us millions to watch it. Mm -hmm. So you know we're not going to keep. So no matter how much it might make you and I and others being called kind of you know party poopers or you know talking the game down, you know I'm fed up with boosterism mm -hmm. and Johnsonism. And all that nonsense. So what, what I mean again, it goes back to the clubs with the venues. What it what it shows you is if you slog at it for long enough, you can you can you can build something out of the ground. I know that's like impossible in London because of the cost yeah, of of land, etc. But but everywhere else, it should be possible. Once once one of them did it, it should have been it should be possible elsewhere. And and to me, that's always been the sustainability for sport. Not not just. I mean, I look at rugby union as an example. Is a a sport that actually a lot of the income generated is use of the stadium on the other days of the year when they're not playing rugby. Well. Yes, it is, and and even then the Worcester rugby union team went down yeah, with yeah, yeah. five million pounds. Yeah, you know, so sometimes you give people the access to more money if it's not well spent, it can still um, it can still cause problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so it, you know, ultimately it's about people. If you've got charlatans and shysters running stuff. And I'm not making a comment about anybody in relation to that, by the way. That's not a point you cut. If, as a general principle, you have know, charlatans and shysters or people looking for quick books, making stuff, or thinking that they can change the world, generally they can't. Mm. And generally it ain't going to work. Um, so, so yeah, overall, no Friday, no 777 rants because it wouldn't be appropriate. People have lost money. People have, um, who needed that money have lost money as a result. It's a sad story. Yes. I'm grateful that we can watch the, get the sports again. A slight little bit of I we told you so, but you know, it was a different it was a difficult balance to um yeah, yeah. Balance beam to walk. You know, you don't want to be talking down stuff that is got the chance to is what everybody's been saying we need to do for years, which is invest, invest, invest. Yeah. But you've got this little kind of voice in the back of your head saying, Where's you know, I know we talked about it. You know, invest, invest, invest is good, but where's the return, return, return? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and there wasn't any. So let's, let's let's invest our time in basketball and return to the topic of uh, game, shall we, Dave? Move on to the brand new world of Super League basketball. It's, me and Dave will say BBL, yeah, constantly yeah. all season. So we're going to declare that now. Um, speaking of declarations, Dave, do you need to? Have you got any declarations? You, did you pay for all your own clothes and? <laughs> Is there anything we need to put on public record before we? Um, I am still. Well, there's a, actually there's a couple of that's a good point, legitimate. Um, albeit, you know, if you declare something the way you're meant to in accordance with the rules, <laughs> I still struggle as a lawyer to find out what the problem is with that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, if it, particularly if it's not being suggested that you've obtained any undue influence as a result, mm -hmm. and the suggestion that, you know, having your kid go to stay at a friend's house to do his GCSEs is in some way corrupt is beyond me. Um, having just had a kid who's just done his GCSEs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'd have quite happily sent him away. <laughs> um, a little, little so and so didn't do enough work from my perspective. Did very well, to be fair. Congratulations, Rory. They still didn't do as much as I would have liked them to have done. Um, so yeah, but that that side. Um, declar other than that, yeah, a couple of declarations. Firstly, for people who haven't listened to this nonsense before or forgetting it, um, this is generally opinion. Ninety nine percent of what we we talk about here is opinion, a little bit of records, all that stuff. I am not a journalist. I do not pretend to be a journalist. I don't go out hunting stories. I don't speak. To, whilst people occasionally around the league do send me messages, um, it's about technical stuff. I'm not interested in the gossip of the teams. I don't want to yeah, know yeah, what's yeah. going on in the locker rooms um, because then it kind of becomes almost journalistic. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this isn't journalistic. So it, it also, there's the rider for everybody that whatever the opinions are, the reality is that I know a lot less than all the coaches do. Yeah. Because the coaches are in the locker room, the coaches are in practice, the coaches are seeing the guys, they're trying to figure out their own team. And outside of Callum, who's yet to be proved, yeah. um, they're all they're all experienced coaches who who do this as a job. So um, so with all of this, that the pinch of salt yeah. you know, has to come in. We just um, watch the games yeah. and we try and work out who won and why. That, that who exactly and sometimes That's right. we're right and sometimes and sometimes we're, we're wrong. wrong and sometimes yeah. So so you know, don't take a gospel. What we do, what we do try to do, is to explain a little bit of what's going on that might be available, might not be as um, obvious, apparent yeah. as apparent to people who are just watching the game as they go uh, and seeing it and explaining the different um, 
backgrounds and the decisions that some of the coaches are making and, and the nature of the players and, and what might happen in the future. And it's kept, so it's more of an academic kind of exercise like that. Um, and occasionally, you know, and obviously if, if, if Bristol can't get the ball in bounds, we will point it out. We will point Sorry, it guys. out. Yeah. I haven't forgotten that two yeah, years on. Uh, two years <laughs> ago. But yes. Sorry, Andreas. Um, but yeah, so so that's what this is all about. It's it, it, it's it's not aimed at um getting it. I have literally I have an affiliation with Newcastle because I've coached there and I'm I, I, I um I do get to sit in the posh seats there. Um, albeit they're not as posh, but I'm sitting there given some of the things I showed. <laughs> um, but that I try and make. I would hope that that affiliation doesn't come across too strongly. In... Well, we'll find out. We'll find out twice in the in two the... and all, baby. <laughs> Indeed. Let's not start there. Let's start with Callum. Actually, you mentioned Callum yeah. uh, Jones and coaching Manchester now, continuing the lineage. Uh, so we'll start in Caledonia. Caledonia Gladiators ninety nine, Manchester Basketball uh, seventy seven. No Debose for 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 the Gladiators. Giants were missing. I think Mad uh, Mad Madut is it? Uh, Mitchell and Moore were on the thing but didn't play. So M and M and M today. Mm. Yeah. Um, th this kind of looked like a team that had been hurriedly put together with very little practice against a team who've already played one competitive game to me. They looked like they met each other on the court. <laughs> yes. Let's be honest. I mean, and they probably did some of them. Um, I think Hafiz Abdul only signed the day that the day of the game or something. A um, couple of things. One, I don't give a toss about the lack of proper shirt equipment. That's going to happen. You know, if anybody's worried about that or twisting about that, then get your head in gear. You know, we've got three thousand games to watch this year. The kit will come when the kit comes. In the moment we've got a gate, we've got a basketball game on court. We shouldn't be cancelling all the games because the kit hasn't come because we're Brexit, because we can't get supplies to provide the stuff at the right time. Blame the Tories. Uh, lefty lawyer speaking. <laughs> um, right, don't blame some Super League basketball. Um, that, sorry, that's the other thing about this. Occasionally, <laughs> some of my rants will, will, will take a, a left-leaning turn. You know, so sorry, guys. If you don't like it, it's fine. You know, you, uh, you have the right to, re to, to turn off or whatever. Um, you know, I, I was a bit worried they were going to put they were going to put that on this podcast, mate. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, whatever. Um, so I don't really care about that. Um, secondly, um, Manchester obviously have literally been in existence about three weeks in reality, um, and have actually, looking at it, opened quite a quite a quite a um, gold embossed checkbook. Um, because some of the guys, the one, the one thing that people might not know again if they just start on this nonsense is that I used to do a lot of recruiting for the Eagles and speak to a lot of agents. So I have a fair idea as to the level of player and the level of cost that comes with a certain level of player, mm. generally statistically based. And certainly Manchester, they've signed um, Nathan Keo, who was the, um, I think the MVP of the um, the team that won the CEBL, which is a Canadian league in the summer, mm. which is high level. Um and um a couple of other guys said just sent a guy we just saw today Mitchell from from Australia who's played in the NBL which yeah. is top league played, in Australia played in the Euro Cup a couple of years ago as in well. the Euro Cup a couple of years ago so so you know that that's a, a level of player who who is who your checkbook is going to have to be expanded for and um and also a couple of a couple more guys Ali Ali who's a, a guy who averaged fourteen a game in college a rookie. Um and a couple of others that I, got, I did check out at the time, but you know ultimately they're going to have a good team. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know they're, they're not going to be a whipping boy team at all. They're going to have a good team, but you know basketball isn't about how many points you score in in college when you get to a the professional league and you've got to put a team on the floor. Having you know basically recruited some of these guys and and, and not really had the opportunity to practice with them or anything like that. As a result, what we've seen, which is a basically a a throughput of the whole every game we've seen this year the guys who are returning do the best yeah. so actually yeah. for all those names it was Marcus Del Pesce who hardly played in Sheffield last year mm. who was Manchester's best player by a mile yeah, yeah. he was ready to play he knew what he's getting into um, so you know it's almost unfair talking about Manchester they've got a lot of talent and they're going to be good I think they probably like most teams in this league have a whole point guard at the moment. I think that's the one thing that's kind of come to me over this week: the point guard situation, which is the hardest position to play in the first weeks of the season when you're getting a new team together. Yeah, but yeah. the point guard situation across the league isn't great. Um, but um, you know, they, they, so they fill that spot. But I think they're going to be really good, certainly. Yeah. Um, Caledonia, they're, they're a team that they're a team that are a month away from 
uh, making any judgment on, on it may be a month away from being a month away to be yeah, honest yeah, yeah. everybody else improves over the month as well you see the, so you... the other thing i should say for our for our younger audience i know we've got lots of kids checkbook ash your mum and dad what that is <laughs> uh the the uh, back to the game Whelan yeah, made it's a good few point shots. actually yeah, it's yeah. Really good point uh Whelan made a few shots <laughs> middle middle of the first quarter got a double figure lead then abdul you mentioned uh he came in he had a good game actually he had a couple of threes 12 0 run for manchester to cut it to two and then Whelan and barnes some threes it was double figures before half time and then they started to gladiator to start the second half uh, an 8 0 run and that was about that really yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on Caledonia yet, but I'm not sure anybody yet. I'm not sure how many ste- how much steps they've taken forward um, from last year. They've obviously re-signed Dubois, but he played the game in Europe and he didn't look healthy. He was coming off a bad injury at the end of last year. Like he was, you know, he was one of ten in Europe, and they played that game like it was a pre-season game. You know, they didn't look ready to be competing at that, that kind of um, Champions League level, um, albeit. It, in reality, it's a mechanism for them to get into the Europe Cup. Yeah, yeah. 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 So people who don't know, if you lose the knockout game, which they did, which is basically a preseason game for them, um, and they would have to have won three of those games, three games. Yeah, yeah. to qualify. So that was really never going to happen. Um, then um, they get into the Europe Cup, but you know they've they, they've signed a rookie point guard, um, and and who's actually done who actually was a little bit uncertain his first 10 minutes in the European game. But after that, you know, and against Manchester, you know, he, he seems to be a guy who's willing to knock down the open shot and um, and find people. I don't think he's Quade Green, but I'm not necessarily sure he would cause, cause the problems that Quade yeah, yeah, may yeah. cause either. Um, Stuckman, they signed from a, a club in the left gold, which is the second league in Spain, um, which is a, a really good level. Um, looks at a really solid four, and, and the four spot is generally the hardest to fill, um, in the league because you've got to find a good guy, who's got a good size, who can shoot, who doesn't want too much money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know and that's it. And so teams with good fours, you know, really are um, it really helps them. Um, signed him, and um, but apart from that, you know, they've lost Clifton Moore, um, who was a big piece, big piece last year, replaced him with Theo Hughes, who was a young British kid. You know, um, as a kind of a big coming off the bench, which meant Ali Hodges just played probably more than you would have expected him to play, and then they're relying on internal improvement from Malcolm and Jimenez a lot, um, and obviously Whelan's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you know, uh, you get the impression that the the debit card may have been put to lesser use, um, this summer than it was last summer. Apple Pay, mate. Apple. Apple pay, Apple pay, yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, th- th- in that, but the, 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 there's no army, you know, if they get the internal improvement from Jimenez and from Malcolm, um, and obviously they brought Onwas back as a glue guy as well. Mm-hmm. On paper, they may not, you know, be, be as star touched as they were last year, um, but in practice, they may be better. Yeah. Um, and in this game, they won't, I mean, basically, Manchester. Made some shots, played some offense, but the thing with the the thing with a new team like that is, it's not the offense, it's the defense. They've got guys who can put the ball in the back basket, but yeah, then you can't teach guys a scouting report about Patrick Wheel and when they haven't met each other, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just can't. It's just so little stuff you can do as a coach. So, um, you know, it was a little bit of a a, a procession, albeit as I say, Manchester showed enough. John had fourteen points. Um, Ali could make some shots. Abdul made some shots. And you know, and, and Ko looks like a guy who can score, um. But how they all fit together, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out in a month, maybe six weeks. Yeah. Uh, Whelan, twenty-two points, five rebounds, six assists. Jimenez, uh, thirteen points. Hill had nine, uh, thirteen points and nine assists. They out rebounded them fifty-two thirty. Caledonia. They actually out rebounded them at the offensive end. Twenty-four offensive rebounds for Caledonia, twenty-two defensive well, rebounds. That's actually a thing again a thing with new teams because as I say, everybody's good with the ball, but it's you know, when you box out, where's your rotation? When's the shot going up? Who's gonna go and get it? And if you look at the game today, Newcastle out rebounded them 53-24. You know, and they're not short of size. So, you know, that that's that's a a generally not necessarily a team that can't rebound, just a team that doesn't know each other well enough to to know who is going to be going to get rebound, whose job it is. It's the little things that make the difference. Mm. 
Uh, Del Pesce, as you mentioned, 20 points and 12 rebounds. I've got John down for 16 points, so we'll find out on that one. Uh, and Abdul, 15. Uh, let's go to a Leicester. Leicester Rod is 91. Bristol Flyers, 69. No Thomas Edwards uh, for Bristol. He did do a pre-game uh, runabout thing with the physio that they do these days, so, so he looked like he wouldn't be too far away. Mm. Um but uh, they've got, they got a long season ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they got yeah. a lot of games to play. They've got a lot of games to play, yeah. Uh, Leicester scored the first 12 points of the game. Uh, Andreas Kapoulos had, a, had to call a timeout inside two minutes. Uh, the, the defence wasn't taking too much away from uh, from Leicester in terms um, of the shots they want. Well, I mean, the story of this game was that Leicester starting five eviscerated Bristol yeah. start of both halves. Um, the, I mean, just again, just talking about the teams themselves, um, I watched Bristol in preseason. They played a couple of games up in Newcastle. I watched them both, um, and they are um, almost built for the old BBL. They are full of long, athletic, rangy players. Um, Sheffield, um, the, the the foreman whose name Pendle Lewis, Lewis. Um, Robinson, who's kind of a shooting big guy, big body. Um, and then Tennyson, who again long, who's a shooter, and Kenny Johnson playing the point, who's a who's long and athletic, you know, and Corey Samuels coming out of pressure, people and Thomas Edwards to, to go rebound. So they were kind of built on the kind of the same uh, the same mechanics that they have been the last couple of years, which is you know, we're gonna win the possession game, we're gonna get more possessions, we're gonna be out in transition, we're gonna run. Um their their issues in those two games at Newcastle were a little bit like in this game, the perimeter defense was not great. In either game, they they, they beat sorry, but so we play on the second night of a back to back, uh, um, and then lost to Newcastle. But KD Johnson didn't play in the um, second half, so you don't take much from the scores. But the perimeter defense in those games wasn't great. You know, a lot of, apart from Samuel's pressure on the ball, and um, they are they brought Johnson back as a point guard, um, and he wasn't a point guard last year, um, which means that there's a kind of a change changing kind of dynamic to the whole thing. They don't really have Samuels to play the backup, uh, but when Johnson got hurt, the only other guy they had who could handle was Tennyson, and Tennyson is basically a flat-out scorer. And, and, and he, that took him out of his comfort zone. So offensively, without that kind of point guard, and I've talked about this about point guards all the way through the season, they struggled a little bit to generate great looks. They've got a lot of athletes, but you know, what they want to be doing is generating looks off their rebounding and off their um, uh, fast-breaking, off their defence. In the defense, um, it's hard to do that when you're picking the ball out of the basket. It's hard to do that when you're picking the ball out of the basket, and it wasn't, I don't think it was anywhere near Andreas where Andreas would want it to be mm. in those games. I don't think it was in this game either. I mean, you know, less, I mean, against that, Leicester's the worst team to play because Rob's teams always have impeccable spacing, always, and they always end up getting good shots. And it's, you know, it's a one thing, it's almost like. Rob gets Rob's teams are more successful when he has, I think, when he recruits solid defensive players and then spaces them out. Mm. That makes sense to play offense because his offensive system is such that you're going to have a shooter. You're going to have this is it. This guy is the um the spacer and they've got a perfect starting line. They've got two shooters in right and Abercrombie. Mm. They got um a, a, a starting point guard in Hunter who can who's. BBL, SLB capable, certainly, from what I've seen. I'm not sh quite sure about his jump shot, but he made a couple at the end of this game. Did, yeah. Then you've got Jackson, who was a secondary initiator and may well be the best player in the league. Mm. You know, certainly one of them in his ability to kind of initiate offense, score efficiently and play through him. And then he signed a big guy, um, Thompson, who's a space filler. Mm. You know, whereas last year he signed a big guy who was a scorer who shot like 26 or 29 and then got cut mm. because he couldn't play defense, I, would, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's saying solid solid defensive players or solid players and then spaces them out on offense and puts them in the positions where they are most successful so the right guys are shooting the right shots okay and I thought that says um, first six minutes of offense was really good you know yeah Bristol took nothing away well you know their spacing you know was far better than anything we've seen for anybody else this in this this, this weekend um, that says bench was a bit more Problematic is a bit more tricky, a bit trickier because he's still trying to rope in those other guys. Got a new guy come off the plane as well, mm. um, and that kind of let Bristol get back in it. McCormack, who's a, a, an American six ten guy, showed some nice touch from outside. He's going to be a weapon this year. People don't guard him properly, 
Um, but overall, um, you just didn't see the the bounce in Bristol that I kind of expected. Yeah. And if Keady Johnson scores five points in a game this year, that done. I don't see them with the rust as it is currently constructed. Mm. I don't see them winning if Keady Johnson is missing layups. And I don't know how healthy he is because yeah. he came out of the game at Newcastle with a um, with what with his ankle in ice, and he missed some shots in this game that I would not have expected well, him to miss. Well, the layup, the most obvious. Yeah, there's the layup, and yeah. just just his comfort level. And on top of that, he's learning a new position, so you got all those. Stuff. So that's something that's going to be their issue, their immediate issue going forward is to get guys onto the scouting report and um, and get some. And look at what is Johnson's best role and how are they going to use him to facilitate other people. Um, but you know, Leicester it was it was like going back three years. You know, it was solid, it was disciplined. Um, they moved the ball well, yeah. and they've got guys who fill roles. Yeah, much better defensively than anything we saw from them last year. Well, um, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, and, and and you know, sometimes it that's not a question of talent because the 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 resumes of the guys is he signed this year aren't the level of the resumes of the guys he signed last year. But it's not always, and it's going to be the same when we talk about Newcastle. But it's not always about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Having a better resume can be a problem. Yeah, yeah. So because because it also means that the player knows he's got a better resume, and the player can think a little bit more of himself as a result, which means it can be harder to get by in so the little things that you need to do to win games. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, not, not overjudge Bristol yet, but no. they, they've got a bit of work to do. They've got a week off to, to sort it out, hopefully get healthy. Thomas Edwards will make a difference because he does a lot of little things for them. And generally, the team which, ha the team which has most rookies is losing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, Leicester start, I appreciate Leicester started. Thompson, who is a rookie, um, I but right, yeah. right, and Abercrombie's not really a rookie, he's been a pro in Australia. Yeah. Um, and Hunt is a rookie. Um, but then they got Connor to come up, and Connor looks healthy. So, yeah, he does. Or, I, I wonder if he's healthy or if it's just he's invested. Because if you played with very, very good players over the years and good guys and winning players, and then you end up playing in a team which maybe doesn't quite have that level of professionalism, mm. um, which I think. Certainly, early on last year, Leicester had issues with. That can be demotivating as well, you know, because you know things are wrong. Mm. And now, if you suddenly, if you're playing with the guys who are playing the right way, um, that can be pro motivating as well. So, if you know, if he's healthy and adds another kind of layer to them as well. Uh, we sort of touched on it. Bristol had a couple of runs where they got it to six or seven, but Leicester always looked like they were going to score when when they needed to. And I was going to ask you a question about Leicester. Um, I looked at I'm looking at the roster. Who is the who's the British who's the who's the um, British qualified player? Because I I counted what I thought was seven imports. Uh, oh God, I don't know. You're asking um, questions. I'm not prepared. Oh no dear. Um, because the, the the four that started, then off the bench they brought um. Shelton. Shelton's uh, British. Shelton's British. Shelton, Shelton, Shelton has a passport. You must, have, you must have stolen into stolen into passport. How's to get out and be in the country? They must be married. Must be marriage, I suppose. I, I, I don't know. I just remember. I remember somebody else asked me that question when I said Shelton, and then I was like, "Oh right, hang on, am I right?" But it, 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 oh, well, good for him if he has. I'm not a bit surprised that he's. It must be because it must be through partner or something like that anyway okay fair enough if he's british that's fine that's fine uh jackson 22.7 rebounds five steals plus 33 welcome back mm. uh jalen hunter as you say much of his came at the end but 17 points got in a little bit of early foul trouble right 15 uh tennyson 15 mccormack 12 uh walsh and robinson both with 11 mm. Uh, let's go to the game you were at, Dave. Newcastle <laughs> Eagles seventy-eight, Sheffield Sharks seventy-three. Not, 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 not a ton in this in terms of difference, but a lot of turnovers and free throws, Dave. Yeah, a lot of, it was, but I enjoyed the game actually because I thought it was it was a game that was kind of free of showiness, mm. free of swag. Swag. You know, I just I just thought it was it's definitely just... been a swag swag. Dip in Newcastle. Dip. Yeah, dip, there has been a swag dip in Newcastle. If you'd seen the clothes that the, the players turned up to in the end of season corporate do, you would know there's been a swag dip um, in in the in the team. And I think that's a good thing. I think good that's thing, yeah. I think that's more suited to um to to Mark Stewart's coaching yeah. style more than anything else. You know, I don't think that's 
necessarily the type of basketball he really identifies with, uh, certainly having watched him. And, and what this game was, was a lot more structured and it was a lot more like the GB games that I've seen. Um, speaking, of, uh, speaking of Stoodle, my favourite bit of this whole game was uh, in the first quarter, I think it was about two minutes to go, and there was an erroneous eight-second violation. Called, yes, and, that's right. and they had a close-up on the camera, and you could see him going, it's a 15.9 shot clock. It's a 15.9, <laughs> and the shot clock had 16 on it. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the ref blew it at 17. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah it wasn't, it was not it was a, it was, that was a bit of um, premature expostulation of the whistle, I think we would say. Yeah, if that's yeah. a word, expostulation, I don't know. Um, but it sounds like it should fit. Um, yeah, there was that, and there was actually whilst we whilst we're on it, there was another. I'm I'm over to the SMB refs here because again, we don't know. Occasionally, there's stuff we don't know, and we ask, or you might know, but I don't. Now there was an interesting one. There was there was a time which you didn't see on the TV, but in the I think it was probably the second quarter. Um, Stuttle was upset with the refs after a foul shot, mm. and what happened was we were seeing the gym for the first foul shot which Jalen Llewellyn missed. Jeffrey lined up four players. Okay. And rather than, as I think Mark wanted, the, the, the foul shot to be allowed to be taken again, yeah, yeah. Paul Unsworth basically stepped in after the first one and told one of them to disappear. Yeah. Right? And so my question is, firstly, um, is the first is a first foul shot, is that a violation on a first foul shot when there is no live rebound if you have an extra player inside the circle? An extra player lined up. Yeah. My my assumption would be no, it's uh, it's not a violent. Well, that's the my assumption. that's that's the question I want to ask. I, I've never seen it before, and I don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, and the second question is then: or, or is it for refs to tell players where to go? On yes, up? it is. I think it probably is. Yeah, I, I'm, it's, I'm it's, with you on that, yeah. particularly early on in the season. Um, but that's so that's one that's out there. So so yeah, is that a violation or not if you've got an extra player lined up? Not if you've got less players lined up, because you don't have to have anybody lined up no. if you've got an extra player lined up. So that's what he was asking. Anyway, so we'll move on past that. Yeah, um Sheffield are an interesting team this year. Um they are they have some really talented players. Yeah, you know, I like their team, uh, but they don't have a point guard at this point. Um they've signed one Cummings in preseason, uh, you know, um, Nelly. The elephant in the room, okay. um, but the elephant in the room was he got cut, um, and they haven't managed to get anybody else in to replace him at this point, and that meant that Nixon had to handle a lot of the ball, which and Nixon's a good player. He's a really you know he's come back for second year. He's a competitive player. He's a shot making player, um, but he was a primary point guard in this game. He had twenty shots, you know, so that didn't help some of the other guys in the game. On top of that, they've got Mitchell is really good. Mitchell has a chance to be really good talent wise. Um, he's a step up on anything. He's a genuine six nine. He is athletic. He can handle both ways. He can finish. Um, you know, talent wise, he's he's, he's he's pretty much you know he's closer to the London end of the scale in relation to talent. He played at Arkansas, average nine points a game. You know, he's really really good. Um, obviously, he's a rookie. So that you have the the the, the fouls and the and, and the, the adjustment and everything going on, and as I say, you've got to get that sweet spot whereby the the rookie isn't too good. Mm. If the rookie is too good, that means the rookie becomes harder to manage. Mm. So so his future will depend on if if he is as humble, if he's a humble guy with the talent he's got, he may only be in this league for one year. He could dominate this league, no question. Um, the other guy, this the other rookie guy they signed is Groves. Groves. As ever, first game of the season, two foul rookie, two fouls in a minute, you know. And he sat down, never really got into the game. He's a six for nine guy from, from Virginia, can clearly shoot the ball. Um, but really didn't get much of a look and struggled and didn't he looked like it was his first game as a pro. You know, he's a little bit straggly. You know, um there's one noticeable time in the second half where Defoe took him down in the post and basically ragdolled him a little bit. And it's just the difference between being old and being 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 a rookie. He's still very talented. Then they have um, the guy who's really interesting is the, is the shooter um, who comes from oh my goodness Jeffries. I forgot Jeffries Bra um, Drake Bla Blake Drake. Drake 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 sorry who comes from the G League who's had two years in the G League and you could tell that he is he is a rounded finished article in relation to what he is you know he, he's a knockdown shooter and if you run him off the line he'll take one dribble and he'll dunk it or he'll dunk and get to the rim he's you know very disciplined in that i liked his game a lot he played 35 minutes and there's probably a reason for it um so 
all the time you felt that Sheffield were actually getting better shots for most of this game. Um, but Newcastle hung around, and Newcastle hung around a bit because um, their defensive discipline was so much better than I've seen it in probably three or four years. You know, they, they have a bunch of guys who, as I say, look like blue-collar players. Mm. And they were missing one of them, Cole Long, who I saw in pre-season, who I actually like, who's six eight shooter, um, long, long by name, long by nature, uh, arms. And um, beyond that, um, everybody else really kind of bought into to, to defending. And um, as such, it became a scrappy game. And I think I'm going to see quite a lot of those scrappy games in Newcastle this year. I'm not sure about Sheffield. I think if Sheffield get a point guard, they might be a bit of a Rolls Royce, mm. um, depending on the level of that point guard, obviously. Uh, but Newcastle, I think we're going to see a lot of them, um, a lot of scrappiness. And that, that means that means fouls. And they call a lot of offensive fouls, but I, I don't, I, I'm not watching them. I'm watching the ball, so I don't know if they're offensive fouls or not. I imagine they probably are. People, you know, players try to get away with stuff. And... Um, and, and then the game kind of, you know, got interesting. It was a good game. Yeah, should we get to the end? Because there wasn't yeah. much uh, in the ways of runs going through it. Eagles led by eight with less than three to play. And then um, Defoe got called for foul. Thought that was slightly harsh uh, from the baseline. Well, camera. beyond slightly harsh, it's a bad call. Um, you know, you know, it was he thought he got the ball, but I mean, you know, he, he probably got some good calls during the game as well. So I mean, but it was just a bad call because the ball went down. Yeah, yeah. Ball goes down like that. Um, that that far down that quickly generally, but again, for guys who don't know if, the, if you hit somebody on the arm, the ball generally goes up, or it or it, it, they, they knock it. The ball goes if the ball goes straight down, it's because the players hit the ball generally. Mm. And there's a lot of swiping goes on during the game. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, even then, you, yeah, go on. Then uh, Ward Hibbert got called for a moving screen. You don't really see it on the uh, on no. the on the TV, but it looked about right, I think. Uh, Nixon with a give and go got to the rim. And suddenly it's four point game with two oh seven to go, seventy two sixty sixty eight. Um Llewellyn with the turnover, Mitchell to the rim, Knight gets his I didn't mention earlier that Knight got three fouls fairly early in the second quarter. Uh but he got his fifth foul. Again, not much. Uh Mitchell at the free throw line, seventy two sixty nine with one forty three to go. Uh, Ward Hibbert then blocked by Mitchell, he, but he, he managed to stay with the play, keeps the ball, head fake gets Mitchell up in the air, and he landed on him. That one was was plenty of a foul. Well, I'll say, I'll say, I'm just going to raise this now as a big point throughout the whole season, throughout the whole every game I've seen in pre season, all the games I've watched this week, there has to have been some form of word gone out to the refs not to call in sports when they mm -hmm. fouled. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I, I actually heckled them in one of the pre season games. You know, as to whether, as to one particularly egregious kind of grab at half court, mm. which I thought we were trying to get rid of in the game. Mm. In fact, every single one I've seen across the first ten games I watched this season, six this weekend, and four preseason games, no one's called that. They must have been told not to call that, which I suppose gives you the benefit of consistency. I don't think it makes so much of a better game, yeah. um, because there are, you know, it, it's quite tiresome. Now, on top of that, there was, there was, I think there was a shot in the in the Caledonia game. Whereby someone got hit on the head, called called who was bleeding? Someone was bleeding. It was was it the Bristol uh, guy? It was yeah. the Leicester guy. The Leicester game. It was Leicester guy. Leicester guy. You know, I don't care if somebody Bristol goes player, up. But yeah. Bristol player. If someone goes up for a shot, someone goes up and takes someone to the rim, and they get hit on the head. You know, for me, that's excessive force, yeah. right? If they've got blood is drawn to their head, I didn't see an angle of it. Mm. That was that one. This one with Mitchell, I thought that was excessive force. Hit down on his head. You know, and it just seems that I haven't seen one called in 10 games and that cannot be a coincidence. I'm sorry. The word has gone out um, that, you know, we're going to raise the bar in relation to what is in a sports one. Like, well, there, was one, there was one almost called in, in Leicester on a, on a fast break where it was a slap across the arm and I didn't think it was an unsportsmanlike. No, I, I didn't either. I know, when, I know the one you mean. And then, he d then he decided against it. Well, I don't, and that was on a shot attempt as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on, that's I mean, why I'm I didn't think it was an unsportsmanlike. I mean, I'm talking about basically the ones at half court. Yeah, yeah, which we all know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and don't and don't you know and and, and you know legislate that out of the game. We don't need it. Get rid of it. If you call it every single one in the, in the Caledonia game as well. That I think yeah, that's right. Real time you know, looks like really it. obvious. And then the ones whereby you know, as I say, if if you're bringing blood to somebody's head in the F, in the NBA, that's a flagrant foul. You know, yeah. and I mean, interestingly, it, watching it now, we unfortunately we were up with the camera, so we were a bit far back. It didn't look because he obviously reacted. After he got fouled, well, uh, you didn't see the right. Well, basically, his hands have come down. But you have, yeah, yeah. as a player, you have, I think, a duty not to hit people in the head. 
I think if you hit people in the head, there's a, there's a greater punishment which should be afforded. Whether not saying that's deliberate, I'm not saying he's done it deliberately, right. but that is the use of excessive force. And then I thought that I don't know, the, the reason I raised it is because on the Mitchell court, I thought that was the same. I thought he came down two hands, he made contact with water but on the head. Um, and but but you know, I may be wrong on each of them, but I'm not wrong on every single one I've seen so far. You know, also in ten games, I'm not wrong on all of that. So there's something up there. We'll keep that. We'll keep that. Uh, keep that under observation on, for yeah. future. So Ward Hibbert goes one for two from the free. Yeah, throw Mark line. should have. Mark was desperately trying to get him to come out, but he didn't want to come out. Mm. And what Mark probably should have done was sent the physio on. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to get Lou Allen in to shoot the foul shots. Um, but Ward Hibbert, he made the first one anyway. Yeah, seventy-three, sixty-nine, one twenty-two to go. Nixon quickly to the rim gets an M one. That's the foe's fifth foul. Uh, and makes it 73-72. Yeah, he attacked Ward Hibbert, and I think Ward Hibbert was still a bit shaky, I'll be honest, from the, from the blue that he got. You know, uh, you know, because Nixon saw, I think, saw the look, and I looked at Ward Hibbert after that play, and he was still a little bit dazed as to, you know, what, what's going on, you know, that type of thing. And Defoe, he, so he rejected the screen, and Defoe couldn't get across there in time. Made a good play, to be fair. Uh, Spencer with a bad pass stolen by Nixon, but then he sort of just threw it ahead to nobody, so Eagles got the... Uh, yeah, a little bit of composure needed, yeah. And, and then, um, end of the shot clock, 35.7 seconds to go. Okuru with uh, 3.76.72. Yeah, that shot was the game, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, Spencer made the pass into Del Pesh. Del Pesh made the right decision, made the pass immediately out. You know, Coro, to be fair, Okoro was excellent in the whole game. Came off the bench, which rather surprised me. Um but yeah, 21 points. He had eight defensive rebounds, which for a little guy is, you know, critical. And he defensively was in the right place a lot. Um, and he was, you know, he's ready for that game and, and he knocked down the shot. And I think well, having watched him in preseason, he is he, I think he can shoot, but he's he's primarily a downhill guy. Mm. Um, so knocking down that shot was massive for him because that that's you know, Eagles have basically worked themselves into an eight point lead with three minutes to go on their home court. You know, you can't lose that game then. Mm. Not at the beginning of the season, the the, the, down, the downer that gives yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. You lose that game. I'm not talking about the score and you lose one game, you're zero one and say one. So what? It's the emotional downer that gives you. Yeah. If you've got you know, and then the uncertainty and their crunch time offense, you know, again, I mean, you took Llewellyn out with about a minute and a half to go, put Spencer back in. They were better with Spencer in the whole game. Spencer was really good. Llewellyn looked at, again another rookie, rookie point guard, mm. first game. You know, rabbit headlights a little bit. He you know, made a couple of plays, but the only plays that the weather made were when it was a short shot clock or it was the end of the quarter and he had to go. So yeah, it was a decision yeah. made for him. So it's all about decision making for those guys. Um but Okara was, you know, really good. And I think, you know, I don't know, just just there was something nice about and even when he made that shot, he's running back on defense. He's not doing a lap of the arena. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Jay Sean Page. Ah, uh, Jay Sean, don't 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 you go hey, Jay hey, Sean. Hey, hey, Sean no, is my was guy. It not, that, there was that word, the, the Bernardini one. Was that not Jay Sean Sean dunked on a fast break and flexed after the dunk? Yeah. But it was not Jay Sean's job to guard Tyler Bernardini two seconds later. I'll tell you that now. It was somebody else's job to guard Tyler Bernardini two seconds later because Jay Sean would have still been on the other, other side of the half court. And Jay Sean had 40 points and 10 assists in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on, I'm, I'm on, Jay, I'm team Jay Sean. <laughs> Um, I certainly, just know which buttons to press. Yeah, just know which buttons to press. I mean, just, uh, but you're right about that play. But that was Andy Thompson, Tyler Bernardini being yeah. smart as hell. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, and Leicester, Leicester being at that time just a bit more mature than us. But yeah, I still, I still wasn't good. Yeah, uh, there was so, a New York Times article born out of that game. Was there really? How? Yes. Yeah. Um, that was the game that the New York Times reporter was there reporting on Fab for a week. Oh, okay. okay. So the game, the game that is, if anybody looks at Fab Flannoy in the New York Times, you'll find a, a long article which deals with a lot of stuff, which I may get a mention in, yeah. but particularly deals with that game where he swore 54 times in 10 minutes in the locker room afterwards. Somebody counting? Did he have a clicker or something? No, that was a journalist. Yeah. Must, the journalist must have recorded it and watched it back. He, yeah. He's in the locker room with us. Scott Cacciola. Oh, Scott. Nice. So, so yeah. So so Nixon had a decent look for three, but it came off the back of the rim. And even though Ochirobi got the rebound, he was one for two, and that was it was basically. Yeah, it was interesting that we, again these little things to watch out for moving forward. You know, Nixon did what every good pro does in that situation. He shot the ball, and he fell down, mm. um, and you know that was that's a flop in reality. Whether it's an Eagles player or a Sharks player, if you're not going to call it, it was a deliberate attempt to get a foul called, which is what you would do because you want three shots, and the rest swallowed the whistle on that one as well. Um, I'm not sure. So. Yeah, but even then, so I'm yeah, I'm on the refs a little bit, um, a little bit, but um, I'm on. I'm, as people will find out, I'm on the refs most weeks. 
particularly at Newcastle. That's yeah. probably it's a bit more personal. <laughs> um, but no, overall, I mean, you know, the Newcastle are an interesting team because um, they're not the fully they're not fully formed. I don't think um, they are running quite methodical offense, which is very different to what they ran last year. You know, Knight is a scorer. You know, he had sixty. He only played twenty minutes, but he had sixteen points. The Coro is explosive. Spencer at the moment looks better adjusted than Llewellyn at the point guard spot. And they're kind of filling in at the four with Ward Hibbert and um, Alan Eikens, who's an interesting player. Mm. Um, Ward Hibbert was outstanding in this game. He was. Um, yeah. Outstanding. I mean, he must have had seven or eight um, big plays. And you think, well, where's why was Ward Hibbert not playing like that last year? And it's not about what Josh Ward Hibbert can be. It's about the dynamic of the team. Yeah. yeah. The dynamic of the team last year, there's a bunch of veterans, a lot of swag, all that. So he's trying to fit in in his way. Okay, it's difficult. This team is far more in his image, mm. far more blue collar, quite ugly at times. Some of the basketball, I'll be honest, some of it was you know quite ugly, but very disciplined, very diligent, and both in you know rebounded the ball and and switched and talked and all of that stuff, and that brings out the best in Ward Hibbert because that's something that he can lead on. You see, and I thought he yeah he was outstanding in relation to the extra possessions he gave. To, to Newcastle in this game, which probably just about turned it. From Sheffield's perspective, I think they're going to be really good mm. um, if they keep if they get out if they keep out of their own way. If that makes any sense. If the players stick at it, stick with it, and stick together, they have the chance to be really good. The difficulty is they add one more player. That's going to be if they, I do add a point guard, that's then going to impact minutes as well. You can have, you know Retino didn't play that much in this game. And Retino's a good player. Um, solid player, you know, and, and Jeffries is a rookie, and um, not not Jeffries, um, Jacob Groves, Groves, Groves is a rookie, and Mitchell, and we've got Ocherobia who played, and then they're going to Bennett Cook to come back as well, so they're going to have some mixing and matching to do to find their best group, I think, and they probably, you know, Prentice Nixon, as I say, six of twenty in this game. Um, I think he was two of nine today in the game, so he's eight of twenty nine. Now he's a better scorer than that, yeah. but it's hard to be a scorer. If you're having to run the team as well, yeah, but it's yeah. not what you've ever done, and there's a bunch of new guys on the team. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, work in progress for them. Um, but you know, you would say at the more of all the teams I've seen, they're probably just above Leicester have the highest ceiling. Mm. You know, uh, Sheffield at this point in time, Manchester don't count, and that includes London, Surrey, and, and Newcastle and Bristol. I think they have a higher ceiling. Question is always whether you make the ceiling. Can yeah. you reach it? Because everybody has to buy in for it. The moment Newcastle have buy in, the question is: Do they are they going to be able to play that way for that many games? You know, they're going to have to find some easier offense at times. I think. Lakara with twenty one points, eight rebounds, four assists. Knight sixteen point seven of ten shooting, and Alan Ikins twelve points and six rebounds. Nixon led Sheffield with seventeen point six rebounds, seven assists. Jeffrey sixteen, and Mitchell thirteen. Let's go. To it's interesting that you say that the top the top four guys in that game weren't rookies. Yeah, yeah. Coro, um, Knight, um, Nixon, Nixon. Um, and um, Jeffries. Because mm. Jeffries is a G League bet, so that make it makes a massive difference early. It really does. Uh, let's go to Saturday. Sorry, 89ers, seventy five and London Lions uh, seventy five at eighty seven and London Lions eighty five. And we just got to avoid saying scorches. Yeah. We'll, we'll try our best. The Niners slowly easing out to a double double figure lead in the first quarter. They just looked to have more scoring options to me. It just it felt um like... I thought that London took this game as a bit lightly in the first half. I don't know. Obviously they're they're probably early in their preseason as as well. Um, you know, the, when I see a clip of Jordan Taylor having a, a, a kind of a happy chat on the bench with one of his guys when the down 15 or something in the first quarter and first half and Bozic's rotations were kind of you know everybody everybody got in you know they started off in a very good win um young British kid from Manchester from last year which is good um and ultimately they're, they're not that heavy on recognized pros at the moment Taylor Soko um flood and um and Delaire's a kid from um from America who was actually in the GB squad a couple of years ago but didn't play I don't think, um but they're the the, the, the kind of the, the main players for them at this point in time I'm quite sure and they've signed another one guy called Brisker 
um, he wasn't there. So they were a bit short. Now, Surrey, well, Surrey, and I saw them in Newcastle in the two games as well. Um, they were missing Jalen Ray, unfortunately, because he was a um, he was very good in the games in Newcastle. Um, but they had Cameron Gooden and Andrew Lawrence, and yeah. Cameron Gooden is a, is really a scout report guy because he can, he can dance and rise up and shoot the ball. And I thought in the first half, London defended them very differently to the way that they defended them in the second half. Um, he made threes. He got things going. They were aggressive. Um, Ada Lucan, is it Ada Lucan? Or yeah. Dame? Dame uh, I think it's Dame rather than Dame. Um, come on. I think. I come think. on. Surely, surely there would need to be an acute accent over the years. Well, e. maybe there is. In a... I'll, 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 I'll look into it. But look into Dame or Dame, please. Report yeah, back. Yeah. Um, well, he was very good in the Newcastle games. Very, very efficient score. He reminded me of a guy called um, Paris Blackwell. He used to play for Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. Yeah. Very kind, not not really above the rim, but good footwork around the rim and kind of a soft touch. And um, you know, he basically ate up London inside um with his scoring. Um so cool looked a little bit out of practice, a little bit out of touch. And um London really survived with Delaire being very aggressive, particularly putting the ball down on the floor and, and on the offensive glass. And he's a probably a legit six nine, six ten, as opposed to a so SBL. sorry, sorry to add a double figure lead and and Delaire had eight of nine unanswered points to cut it back to uh to one point, but then Gooden and Steele hit threes and they were back out to double figures again. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know that's a lot of mix and matching London's rotations. Um Delaire didn't smile much, I have to say. No, he did. He really looked he was really focused. Um but um but yeah, and and, and really sorry controlled the game for three and a half, three and a bit quarters. Yeah. And then I thought London, and of course I've forgotten to mention Aaron Rack, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, um, who also looked a little bit kind of out of rhythm in the first half. But we know that Aaron Rack is a third and a fourth quarter player, yeah, yeah. and um, we know that from last year. And um, it was kind of three quarters in, then Surrey kind of. I thought I thought I didn't. I wouldn't say Surrey froze. I would say London picked up their defense. They didn't yeah. let good and shots. They were trapping a little bit off the screen and roll, which is when you put two players on him. When he, when someone sets a screen, you make him pass it out. It's hard for him to do that because he's only probably five tenths. So he's not got the angles to pass it out. So that slows the offense down. Then you're relying on somebody else to make a play. Uh, looking maybe a little bit tired at that point. They don't have the extra score in Jalen Ray. So the and, and Mervyn James. In and out a little bit, you know, he's a 19 point game of scorer in college, so college, yeah, yeah. expect a little bit more from him and yeah, in, yeah. we come forward. Um, so but he's a rookie, you know, yeah. so, so you know, it's hard for them to get again, it's hard. Um, the and Lions, they, the Lions the were one for 14 from three point range through three quarters. Mm. Um, and to be honest with you, it looked like sorry, we we're going to cruise it, they're up 20 yeah. with with eight minutes to play, which full disclosure was the point which my wife said she was ready and I was taking her out to the pub. So by the time I got to the bar and looked at live stats and saw it was a two-point game in the dying seconds, I was like, what the heck happened? So I had to watch it back this morning, the last eight minutes. They were still uh, 18 up with seven minutes to play. They were still 10 up with four minutes to play. But Rye, you talked about him being a, a fourth quarter place play a 7 in 11 no run to, to make sure that we got our customary drama at SSP. Yeah, Ryan Taylor, you know, you know, they, 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 as I say they were a different team in the you know the, in the in the fourth quarter because they are you know high, high level players and you know Bosic cut his rotation right down. Mm. And, you know, he had all those guys on court at the same time and that does make a difference. So he got a little bit tired but they also got a little bit tight as I say without good to bail them to make those shots. You're looking for who else is gonna gonna make a play. So he started playing not to lose a little bit, I think, as yeah. well. But that's tough because it's all generally dependent on what the defense is doing to you. Well, it, it looked like Trelovinskis was gonna be that guy because he makes a three with uh, two minutes to go, yeah. but he was waved off for an for an illegal screen to get him free. That would have been a ten point game with two minutes to go and probably ended the comeback. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, and, and and that was he was actually looking for his kind of fifth guy because he had Lawrence and and Gooden and um. James, I think it was James had a call. Maybe one, maybe Lawrence wasn't in the game, but you know, Chelovinskis, he played Parkinson a little bit as well at the two. Um, looking for that fifth guy, which is where Bray would have been if Bray had been um playing. So they were, they were, they they hung on. They they literally hung on with their life. 
So uh, Rai scored and then uh, a turnover, Soko dunk, 85-82, timeout was called, 125 to go. Then they turned it over again and Rai got to the rim, 52 seconds to go, 85-82. And then um, James missed a, a, a three-pointer with 26 seconds to go. And, and to be honest with you, Jordan Taylor got a decent look to to tie it. And the way he shot in the fourth quarter, I thought that was... He really did. Amazing. I mean, that's certainly his shot and he knew what he was doing. Came off the screen a little bit, probably a little bit. He's coming a little bit off balance to his right, maybe. Um, but he just left it short. You know, and that might be a legs thing. That might be a preseason thing. Um, I think if you told Bozic that, you know, with seven minutes to go, Jordan Taylor would have a three, that three-point shot to tie the game with mm. 10 seconds left. He absolutely took it. Um, but, you know, it missed. And... and that's really important to sorry because that would have been an absolute body blow to lose to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolute body blow to lose when you're at 20. Um, but yeah, it was just a screen came off. I think they, they were mentally mentally challenged at the end, sorry. Yeah. You know, they were waiting for the game to end. That's always a dangerous yeah. situation yeah. to be in. Uh good and twenty one points, five eleven from uh three point range, uh three point line. Um, Adelican 20 points, 13 rebounds, Lawrence 15. Um, Delaire 23 points, nine rebounds, five assists, Taylor with 19, uh, Rye with 18 and eight. There was some wild plus minuses in this game, yes, on, on London's side. If you go and look, yes. go and look at them, let's see, they had some, they, they ran out some unusual mm. lineups, different guys, different places, and it's tough. And, and you, know, you know, everything we know about Eastern European coaches is that they play the long game, mm. Mm. you know, he's working out his team. Yeah. He's working out what he's got. He's, Sandy came in, played quite well, actually made some shots. Um, so he's working out who who are the guys he's going to rely on because he isn't going to be able just to to to, to pick up the phone and, and pluck Noir out of the G League this year. No, no. You know, so you're gonna you know it's going to be a bit more of a a coaching job, I think, for Coach Buzic in the in the in the SBL SLB than it was in the BBL. Yeah. Uh, let's come to today. Sheffield Sharks seventy nine, Cheshire Phoenix eighty four. Um. An even start to this one, and then Anderson five points, Mitchell four points, fourteen to run, and and Sheffield are up ten. Yeah, and I remember thinking that you know that, that Cheshire looked way out of sorts. Mm. Um, Sheffield were playing with a ton of energy. If it wasn't for Cam Christen in the first half, again another returning player yeah. as opposed to a rookie, um, Cheshire may have been you know, Sheffield may have been out of sight. You know, in Sheffield at the times, you know, they, they look really good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you see what I mean. Just the, just the physicality that they have, the size that they have, the limits that they have. Um, there's there's just something which isn't isn't. You know, he's, he's trying different lineups. He played at times with um, when Mitchell wasn't in, he played with Jamel at the five. Did that at Newcastle a little bit as well. Um, but. They were just, I just think that probably, yeah, well, I, I was figuring it out as the game was going on, which as the game went on, you felt more and more that Cheshire were going to step up because Cheshire got into more rhythm. Oh, I, I, thought, looking, I thought actually, depending on which way you want to put it, Sheffield lost the game or Cheshire won the game in the in the last 100 seconds before half time because the Sharks were up 11, looking super comfortable, and then Nick's got the last, four, didn't it? last seven points of the of the half. Great pass from Ulf, by the way, on that. Yes, to get, the, to get the shot on the buzzer, yeah. And suddenly it's 43-39 at half time when it felt like it should have been 10, 10 points, points or more. Yeah. yeah, and closing out quarters, closing out halves, absolutely critical. Yeah, um, and I'm, I, was, I was just looking at Sheffield. I, I'm I still am not sure it's much that uh, that kind of a, a, a shot creating floor general won't solve. I think Nixon and Glasgow are both guys who are more suited to getting their own shot mm. than than getting shots for everybody else. I think they run the stuff. They run the stuff quite nicely. They move the ball. That they, they, they're not a selfish team at all. They, you know, they, they, watching them at Newcastle, probably the only guy who was looking for his own shot was Matthews. Um, everybody else has looked at often giving up good shots to get a better shot, which is a great sign first first week of the season. Um, but the, the obviously the the um there's something which maybe it's just that person at the end of the game mm. have the basketball in their hands or at the end of the shot clock at the end of the half to control the game that they didn't quite have in this game. And Cheshire are, Cheshire are mega interesting because you know they're they're replacing Rideau and, and Rye, who are two of the hardest guys in the league to replace. Mm. Um, and so they've they're looking for some kind of in, and Jack, of course, Jack as, well, as well, like ninety seven percent from three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they're looking for some internal improvement from 
Kristen with Big Roll and from Holden. And obviously they've, they've still got Skyler standing up there and bombing it. Um, and then Taj T comes in for where um, Shahshwa was last year. And Shahshwa was a big piece last year as well. Yeah, he was, yeah. You know? So, you know, you're looking thinking, well, they've, they've changed a little bit. They aren't as three-point dependent. Atwood is kind of a, a more of a an old-school scorer who can score at three levels, but doesn't kind of camp out on the three-point line. Um, and, you know, Holden's never really been, you know, that much of a shooter either. So you're thinking, how are they going to generate their their offense, you know, without Rideau and Rye? And they did it in a variety of ways. They did it with second shots. They did it with, uh, I thought Sheffield's scouting report on Holden was bar poor. You know, Holden shot the ball four times in the whole game. He had eight assists. At least three of them were shots, with were, were throwing it to Skylar White in the corner, you know, in a far corner. And Holden can make every pass. He's a great passer. He's 6'6". Six, six. He can make every pass. But you have to know your scouting report with him. And um, if Jamel Anderson is guarding Cameron Holden, right, you are not helping off Skylar White in the corner. No. You know, he just can't, you know, because you're saying that, okay, Cameron, if you can score on Jamel, maybe, you know, top five defender in the league minimum, okay, then that's fine. I'll live with you getting a tough two on, on Jamel, but I'm not leaving Skylar White to give him a, a rhythm corner three when Holden puts a, puts a diamond in the corner. And that happened a couple of times. So I thought... And then at the end of the game, that would got a couple as well. Yeah. Uh, so White hit some threes in the third quarter. It was basically the team's trading scores. And then Atwood, as you said, made a couple of threes. I, I mean, I don't remember him shooting. I'm sure he made some. He did. He shot. He shot. You know, I looked at the stats last year because I watched him in Newcastle and he made about 17 in a row in, pre, in, in a pregame. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, he shot, he shot 25 all season. <laughs> Why is this guy not shooting more? Um, but he did. I mean, he shot. He, he was about. You know, thirty odd percent. We only probably had fifty or sixty attempts last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can shoot, but the um, but it was the, eighty seventy two with two twenty to go after he made those couple. Well, of what happened was in this game, you know, for those of us, those of you who listen who are NBA fans and will go back to kind of um, Golden State and their death lineup, mm. um, after kind of not messing around, but after kind of you know getting everybody their minutes, the last seven minutes, Cheshire went to a death lineup. Mm. And what I mean by that is Skylar White was back at the five. And Holden was on the point. And then they had Clemens, who was effectively um, the point guard, but basically played as a scoring guard. Mm. Played as a two. Um, Kristen and Atwood. Okay, so basically you have, you have White stretching the floor. You have Holden making the passes. And in the situation where you've got to make Holden the scorer. If you let Holden generate an advantage with his pass, the ball things around and it ends up in the hands of Kristen. Atwood or whoever on this occasion ended up in the hands of Atwood. Um, they weren't ready to, they weren't, he hadn't shot many during the game. He probably wouldn't run out with him, but you've got to know. Now, Atwood's really interesting because I've, I said it a lot last year. The knock, the only knock on Atwood last year was at the end of the games when he didn't make plays or he didn't get the ball or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And for him to step up and make two threes, you know, in the last three or four minutes of that game to create that separation, massive for Cheshire. Because mm. you, you only had 12 in the game, but it's not a question, a question it's not a question of, um, how you score it's when you score you know yeah, yeah. you score it's when you score and to make those two plays they buried the game and it was a little bit like the Newcastle game whereby I felt watching the Newcastle game Sheffield were going to win mm. um, and then suddenly you look with three minutes to go and they're down eight mm. you know and by the time the timeouts called they come back with a little kind not a fake run but a little run but they're too far back well, out of the timeout, Matthews made a three. And then uh, on the next play, Sheffield had, he made two free throws. So they did get it down to three. Um, both teams missed, but then transition layup from... Uh, Kristen did a hell of a play. That wasn't, you, 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 you're underselling that a little bit since the transition yeah. layup. He ran past three people yeah, under yeah, yeah. pressure, you know, and then you know, went down the middle and finished. Right, yeah. It was a hell but of a play. But the Clemens one as well. Yes, because they didn't. Uh, there was some issue with the shot clock or other. I, yes. We couldn't see the shot clock, so I don't know how long there was left on it. But yeah. you could see Ben going. We need to get into the front court. And yeah, he just made a little dart into yeah. the front court and then just went straight down the middle, and nobody stopped the ball and 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 laid it in as well. Yeah, and that was. Yeah, you just felt you know. With the one thing I'd say about Sheffield is you know at that point, you know the body language wasn't great. You know, you saw Matthews with his hands on his hips. You know. Um, Jeffrey's, I don't think it was bad, but it was a little bit deflated. I, I would say that's probably the way I'd describe it. I think they need a galvanizer. Mm. I, I'm looking at them. I think that that kind of 
Yeah, I think it just comes out of hunger, if I'm honest. Mm. But I think they need, they need to be the right guy. And, and they need to find a galvanizer because they just they, they looked a bit deflated by the end. They played two games. They played pretty well with that 0-2 because they haven't made it at, at the right time. And um, as I say, part of that is Nixon shooting 8 of 29 mm. when he's having to play point guard. Yeah. You know, and that's hard. They will, uh, they'll still win a lot of games this year, we fancy Sheffield. Um, but 0-2 they are. Uh, so Mitchell 16.7 of 11, Matthews 16 points. At least it's not as, sorry, Dan, at least it's not as bad being 0-2 in, in the, the North yeah. group as it would be in, in the, the South yeah, group, yeah, according indeed. to Rose Lodger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because, because, because apparently it's, it's, the losses mean more in the, in the group where you play a six game, well, <laughs> wins mean does that mean wins mean I'm lost? I'm totally absolutely lost. Two from four, it's easier to be to be in a two from four situation than a two from five situation, is it? Jesus, I mean, what, what are they teaching them at Plymouth? Is this the basic statistical probability or what? <laughs> oh, you were very good, I have to yeah. say, very good. I, I might have got a calculator out in parade on it. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Uh, Matthews, five, five of seven for 16. Anderson, five of seven for 14. 12 of those in the first half. Uh, Christian, uh, 24. Clemens, 17. And uh, White, five of nine, all threes. For 15. Yeah, Clemens is interesting. I mean, he's always not a rookie. He's second year out. Um, I have to say, the first three quarters, I was thinking, is a kind of when he had the ball in his hands at the point, he didn't convince. But when they moved him away from the point a little bit, and when he got to attack yeah, a bit, yeah. he seems to be a straight line driver. I think he made a three from the corner off a holding yeah, pass. Yeah. You well, know, I, and, and that... I was looking at the stats at some point. It might have been at half time, and I thought, oh, he's only played something. I can't remember. I can't remember how many minutes, but he was a minus ten, and he got yeah. two or three fouls. And I was like, mm. and then second half, he's so he's a different person. And again, for those of you who don't know, we, we, we are those of us who've been doing this for a while are absolutely kind of. Um, almost laser-like, you know, focus on the new guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we want to figure out what they are, who they are. You know, this time last year, you know, I was faithfully predicting that the Quincy Rideau wouldn't last for another three yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because he yeah, played at Leicester. Like, first game at Leicester. The first yeah, game yeah. at Leicester, he, he couldn't make a layup. He looked, yeah. you know, he looked up, he looked out of shape. He looked, yeah. you know, his, his shot was six foot off. It was like, this guy, this guy ended up being potentially the league MVP. So, you know, as I say, pinch of salt, everybody. Yeah. Uh, and finally, Manchester basketball, 63, Newcastle Eagles, 80. Uh, Moore and Mitchell, as we said earlier, into the into the lineup for Manchester in this one, even for about eight minutes. Newcastle with a 14-4 run night, had eight of them, and, and Eagles were up 10. Yeah. Um, again, it was it was primarily Newcastle defence. I think that was better. I'm not, I'm not sure how much it was Manchester missing. Or it was Newcastle's defense, but they do have good size at the perimeter. Newcastle, you know, we're on six two. The core is six two. Knight is a genuine six six. Um, and um, and I think that impacted a little bit. You also had Manchester in that situation where Nick Lewis wasn't really shooting it because he was trying to be the point guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that kind, it's of, okay. So shot the ball seven or eight times early because Nick Lewis is trying to get him involved, which is the right thing to do. But it also takes a lot away from Nick Lewis. And those other guys aren't even Kale, and not necessarily in the shape that they need to be in yet, you know. So they weren't finishing the way that um, Callum would have wanted them to. Um, Newcastle was again, yeah, it was, it was kind of grindy basketball, I thought. Um, but they made enough shots, and Alan Aikens in particular, yeah, he played you know, well. really made some plays early. He's kind of a He's kind of a positionless player, you know. He's he's only probably he's six four, um, or be advertised a bit. He's six seven on the Eagles program, but I'm not quite sure what shoes he was wearing when they measured him. <laughs> um, he's only six four, but he is he can shoot it. He averaged nineteen a game in in, 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 a, in a Division One college, not the best Division One college, but it's still a Division One college. He can shoot it. He can kind of post up. He kind of passes when he's not. You're not thinking he's going to pass. Um, but he has a kind of a presence about him, kind of you know. And, and um, the first game he came in, came in late. He wasn't. He was the last one signed. He came in after the rest of the team had come in. And the first preseason game, I remember watching him, thinking, I'm "Not sure what this guy is." He had that look in his eye, which can either be because you're an extremely kind of cerebral player, playing at your own speed, doing it your own way, figuring it all out, or because you're permanently stoned. 
<laughs> you know, um, we're I've never not been suggesting that day. We're no, 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 no. But I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what the look in his eye was. It took us about a game, yeah. but I figured out it's because he's a very cerebral player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was, you know, it's a bit, the, the first impression was what this guy's from California. What's going on here? You know, he, he played at such a different cadence to everybody else. You think he's getting used to all these Americans coming in, flying around, dunking, rebounding, all this stuff, and he's just he's kind of just just not slowly jogging through, but you can see he's figuring it all out as you go. And um, I mean, today you know there was a couple of it wasn't as much the shots he made, but he made he made I think he made, he made a little floating hook in the lane, mm. um, and you're thinking, why oh, didn't that? That's an and then a couple of layups and a couple of putbacks and little step throughs and that type of thing. So, I mean, he may well be the Eagles' X factor in relation to offense because I don't think they're going to be a team that's going to be putting up 100, 110 regularly. Mm. Um, I think they're going to have to get into the 80s, late, late 70s, early 80s, and that might be enough to win games. Mm. Um, and he was really, really good. And and they they appear to be quite an unselfish bunch, which is really good. Um, so it kind of got out. And once it got out, they got some decent minutes from Bill Neighbor, to be fair, as well, who didn't play on Friday night. Um you know, who took it? took a charge and got me a couple of shots. Um, and once it got out, to, and fourteen defensive rebounds from Joshua Tibbet, which again yeah, is yeah, yeah. amazing. Um, so once it got out to that kind of distance, that Manchester didn't have enough continuity to kind of get back in it, did they? No, no. There was nineteen points at half time, and as you say, there was they, they they were a bit better in the second half. They got a bit closer, but never close enough that you thought they were going to get. Uh, all the way back. This is, I thought the best bit of the uh, second half, Dave, late third quarter, we got our first double T of the of the season. Yeah. I'm sure the referee saved it just for you, Dave. They said, right, let's let's double T. Well, let's do it for Newcastle. Let's put Defoe in there. That'll, yeah. that'll get I didn't see what happened. So, I mean, yeah. what happened was, I think Mitchell um, dribbled the ball out of bounds, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And Darius has always been very prideful about defending smaller guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's one of the few big guys that, if you look at him, he's got dancers' feet. Mm. And so he's defending the four. He was de- when he was playing most of this game today. He was defending the four spot. Mm. He actually shot a couple of threes from the corner because he was playing the four spot because yeah, he was yeah. Will Neighbor. And the door one Will Neighbor defending the four spot. The one Will Neighbor fill in the middle with his length. So Darius then has to kind of play out of position a little bit. And he's always been very prideful of you know he used to, we used to put him onto Tuck and to Mike Martin and people like that. You know, and given specific instructions to take away the three point shot, which was not an easy thing to do if you're if you're the size he is. So he had Mitchell dribble the ball out of bounds, mm-hmm. and obviously he must have clapped a bit, and then Mitchell yeah. probably said something, and Defoe probably yeah. said something. Yeah, as I say, double technicals for me are just utterly wasteful, unless there's a fight waiting to break out, mm-hmm. which there, there wasn't. No. Um, they're, they're, they're an absolute waste. I thought there was an and there was a bizarre and one call in this game. Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, he was. A, he went up and down, and then back yeah, up. you know, I mean, he he, like, he got fouled, he travelled, he laid it in, and he got an hour one. Yeah, yeah, there was a foul. It was yeah. a foul on the first oh, shot. He landed, and then he went back. Landed, up. and then and he gave him, and, and you know, I'm it doing was which one of them where I looked at him and went, well, they can't give a basket for that because right? yeah. he's landed. Yeah, well, I don't know which... and nobody seemed to even argue it. That's why I couldn't work out. No, neither could I. And, and I think it was, I don't know which ones with it was. Uh, probably Simon if Paul was at Paul was at Newcastle on Friday. But um you know, come on, guys. Come on, was that you know, no way. Um so anyway, but the, yeah, it was it was it wasn't in a situation where it made much difference. Um and then, you know, as I say, Newcastle's third quarter wasn't particularly good offensively. They were, you know, Okoro twelve, did they? Twelve, and they didn't but more than that, twelve, they didn't really get many good looks, really. Okoro was kind of um Kind of passive in this game. I'm not sure how healthy he is, and um, and, and the Wellen struggled again. Again, young point guard struggled again. Um, but Spencer was really, really good. Spencer is actually, yeah. you know, Spencer has stepped in as a guy who's playing with a ton of confidence from the last two years. And Milton yeah. Keane, yeah. you get the impression he know he knows everything that's going on around him. Yeah. He's 29 now, so there's a bit of leadership there. He's, he's he looks like he's in a really good place. Yeah. Um, mentally and in relation to leading that team and he's got a perfect team for him and he's also got a coach he, he played for Stuttle in the under 20s GB way back when so there's a link there so he knows him so they, they know each other and I just think that you know he may well be the starting point guard at some point but if once his, his energy gets up but so he he was really good and and yeah and you know they have to be happy you know they're 2-0 oh, they're, they're playing without one of their American they're only playing with four Americans or four, four imports um, and they've got again internal improvement, you would say, from Ward Hibbert in particular, possibly from Del Pesh as well, who you know, who's been pretty solid. Uh, and um, 
kind of a, an investment in score as in in night and um in this game of Coro in this in the other game of Coro but in this game Alan Aikens um you know who in the day he got 18 in the first half on seven of nine shooting you know that's not and he is a rookie as well so that he kind of breaks my rookie rule you know, but he's a cerebral one, you know, or, or, or the alternative. Um, but, you know, he just, I, you know, I just like the look of, of what he is. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic with Newcastle. I think this, they, uh, they've got the the basis of, a, of of kind of what Mark wants his team to be, having seen the JB games, having seen a little bit of the Northumbria teams he has. At times, they're overly formulaic. At times, you know... You want them to break it a little bit and just make a play. So I'm going to make a play, but they are quite. He's very systematic, and the most important thing is defensively. They seem to they seem to understand that a scouting report is not something you use when you've got diarrhea, <laughs> which is what the impression I got last year from a few. <laughs> which for an ex coach is fundamentally mentally disintegrating yeah, when you watch yeah. them try to win. So yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean two and all it means nothing in a in a in a it would mean a lot in a four team group, I yeah, think. It would mean a lot in a four team <laughs> It group. doesn't mean as much in a five team group. Um I think Manchester will only get better. Um I, I can't see I mean Sheffield are in a little bit of pressure now realistically they've got another loss in them but you can't see anybody qualifying at four and four. Mm. Um so they'd have to get to five and three as a minimum mm. to qualify. Disappointed there was no points difference chasing at the end of these games, I have to say. Mm. You know, that yeah, seems to everybody yeah, seems to be yeah. nice to each other. But it's all yeah, this yeah. all this kind of kumbaya stuff with a new league, you know, everyone working together and all this stuff. Mm. That needs to end, you know. You, know, <laughs> you need to win by 20, not 17. Yeah. Put the three up. Yeah. Um, because for those who don't know, you know, if, if the teams are tied at the end, the points difference between the teams comes into it, and the points difference in the group comes into it, as you will know that tell us in due course. Yeah. Um Overall, yeah, I haven't talked about Manchester because you can't. No, well, my light's gone a bit wonky over there. I don't know what's going on. Sorry if you for the discord. Won't be the last time we're in the dark this year, everybody. I think it's the ghosts coming to get me or something. The lights just flickering away. Uh, we've reached the end anyway. So uh, Ko uh, seventeen, Mitchell fourteen. They were the only two in double figures. There were five of nineteen from three. Alan Here's I a question for you, Dan. If um, if Keo gets in trouble with the ref, does that mean it's a technical kill? <laughs> no, I tell you what was really good. I just thought of that when you said it. I thought yeah, it was yeah. a good to not to see. J Jason with his Ali Ali oop. I like that. Ali Ali oop. Yeah, his Ali 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 oop. It would be Ali 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 oop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. I might steal that. And if, uh, and if only if he was French, it could be an Ali 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 oop. <laughs> um, Alan Harkins, 21.7 of 11. Knight, 15.7 rebounds. Josh Ward Hibbert, 13 points, 14 rebounds. And Spencer's. 13 points and six rebounds. Um, just, just to say, it's so nice to hear some of those voices again. Mm. Um, you, um, Jason, you and Ro, Josh over in London, obviously you heard a bit of him last year, um, Kieran in Scotland. I just thought it was just, just nice. You know, and even Drew and Drew and Ron um, in Newcastle, a bit American for my taste, but, you know, we'll live. Um it's just, I just think it gives it an, an absolute kind of immediacy mm. that you didn't have in your cupboard. Mm. I'm disappointed you didn't take your cupboard around with you. You know, <laughs> I should have claimed the telly. You know, I could have, I should, if I'd been quicker, I'd have ordered a photo booth for you to, bro for you yeah, to broadcast yeah. that or put it next to the court. You could have, you could have four for you know, four photos for a tenner, that type of thing, whilst you were doing it. There but, was, there was no. something nice that we were a minute into the season and we got our first disgusting from Kieran. Yeah, yeah, no, I thought, I thought he was trying too hard, to be fair. <laughs> um, albeit, to be fair, that's the one thing I didn't mention about, um, that was Del Pesci deserved it, because Del Pesci was, was flying that game. The one thing I didn't mention about um, Cardonia was Fag Benley is interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a, what, he's Timmy's sister, yeah? Mm. Um, uh, brother, sorry, of course, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Brother. And, um, I'm not sure what his, his shooting is, but he's he's he it seems like he can impact the game and they've picked him up out of London, you know, and he's athletic. So you know, and he started him, you know, which says a lot because Gareth is generally less than reluctant to throw th to give things to players who haven't earned it, if I can put it that way. Um so he's one to be keeping an eye on as as we go through the season. You know, because what we're looking for ultimately is development of players who can eventually, you know assist our national team yeah. and generally if you're playing big minutes in the SBL you're only going to be SLB Jesus um, 
then you're only going to be at a certain level, if I can put it that way. Um, you know, and you're going to be a role player at in international in, at the highest level of international. To be if you play that bit, unless you total SLB. Um, but even developing those role players is important. Mm. You know, and so let's see. Um, let's see if we can get something out of him as well. Mm. He caught my eye. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right, that brings us to the end of the week. We're going to be early uh, this week. We might oh, be late please. next week. I'll, oh. I'll speak to you off air. We might be late next week. Um, uh, I think that's it. Anything further, Your Honour, or no? Yeah, I don't think so. I think the world is being firmly put to rights, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, as ever, you know, anybody who wants to say nice things about us online, are more than welcome. Anybody who doesn't. Even better because I can come back at you next week and you've got no right of reply. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, good to be back and hope everybody's enjoying it. And you know, nice to have a league, yeah, nice indeed. to actually have some proper games and, and let's say some some hope, yeah, some hope. I think the uh, I didn't talk about the league structure, I think they, they, I know they said I didn't have time to think about it. I think I thought the two legged semi finals had been done to death, but apparently we're back to them. That kind of disappoints me a bit, but um. I understand that maybe they'll make those improvements in in, in future years. Um, but good yeah. job I didn't delete but, the two-legged spreadsheet, Dave. It is indeed. You know, if I, I was that, if I, you know, when that came, that news came out, that I did actually wake up at night mm. thinking of that, yeah. thinking of your two-legged spreadsheet yeah. on an easel. Yeah, an easel. whatever. Uh, but no, it is it is good. And um, overall, yeah, it might be a survivor of the fittest. Mm. Right, indeed. Uh, right, so we will be back next Sunday night to do it all over again, possibly Monday. Uh, but for now, goodbye.